Fed now and Reg J rely on account numbers. Hey everybody. Well, or should I call you by your first name? Well, I don't know your first name or I would. And when it comes to names, do you have to check names or can you rely on account numbers in the Fed now service? See, this is something that we've seen in many different payment systems. Do you have to check the names on the transaction and then compare them to the name on the account? Or can you just rely on the account number? in a real fast payment system, that's really important. And the answer, well, the answer is coming from Regulation J that to ensure that the FedNow service can complete real-time end-to-end transfers in a matter of seconds, the rule provides that a reserve bank, that's the reserve bank, may rely on the number. In other words, the account number and the routing number combination in the payment order identifying the beneficiary's bank and beneficiary consistent with what we see in UCC Article 4A. You see, the Reserve Bank is, well, however, they're entitled to rely on these identifying numbers only if it's unaware of any inconsistency. This means the Reserve Bank is entitled to rely on these identifying numbers unless it's aware of an inconsistency. So that means unless they are aware of an issue or a problem or a mismatch, the Reserve Bank will be able to go by simply the account number. When we look at the Reg J commentary, the board looked at this one and they decided requiring reserve banks to take additional steps to prevent erroneous payments when they identify potentially incorrect payment information would really slow down the process of our time sensitive payments and introduce some really complexities to the operations of the FedNow service. Instead, the board decided functionality allowing banks to request a return of payment after they identify an error would be more effective in addressing erroneous or misdirected payments. The board also noted that where the Electronic Funds Transfer Act applies to a consumer's FedNow payment, that are EFTAs, Electronic Fund Transfer Act, error resolution procedures, they're going to also apply. This is actually telling you a lot, trust me on this, but we got more coming. Please note that the rule only allows additional time to determine whether to accept a payment order where the bank has reasonable cause to believe a beneficiary is not entitled or permitted to receive a particular payment. To preserve the end-to-end -end speed of the processing, the board rejected actually broader approaches that would allow additional time at a FedNow participant's discretion or where a bank has reasonable suspicion rather than reasonable cause. Now, recognizing that FedNow participants who make funds immediately available to beneficiaries may actually face some operational challenges like system maintenance needs or keeping up with cybersecurity incidences, well, subpart C of Reg J allows participants to actually be able to sign off from the FedNow service for a limited period of time to be able to deal with those situations but they should be limited. So basically what I'm telling you is rely on the count numbers and let's keep the payments moving fast. In fact, let's keep them moving really fast. Now, if there is a payments question you want answered, email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. Here at The Payments Professor, we make learning payments fun, engaging, and entertaining. Well, at least when we can. For now, class dismissed.